This is the plaintiff, Ashley Covington. She says the defendant is her roommate's daughter, and that strange girl trashed the inside of her truck. That's right, she threw raw eggs and milk all over the place. She had to have the truck completely detailed. But it still smells funny, and the defendant needs to pay. She's suing for $270, the amount she's out. This is the defendant promise, Blair. She says the plaintiff is her father's girlfriend, and he antagonized her to the point of no return. Everything that happened in his girlfriend's truck was his fault. He caused all the problems, and he's the one responsible to pay his girlfriend back for her cleaning expenses. She's accused of losing it on her father. All parties, please raise your right hand. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Milian is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Covington, you are suing Ms. Blair, who is the daughter of your boyfriend? Roommate. Roommate. Mm -hmm. You're not romantic? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Of your roommate. For two hundred and seventy dollars, the cost of detailing the car—that is that your car? Yes, it is. That he was driving. Yes. That she did some damage to inside the car. Tell me what happened. So this was exactly July twenty-first. Um, he advised me that he picked her up from a grocery. He was doing something where he was at another grocery store. He picked her up from another grocery store, and upon picking her up, he. Why said, did he pick her up? Um, because she had groceries. Okay, and she, and she texted him and said, can I have a ride? Yes. And he was driving your car? Yes. Okay. So he proceeded to pick her up from the other grocery store, which was Walmart. And he said she had a little bit of an attitude, but after he finally got her in the vehicle, he had to stop off to a gas station to pick up something that he had left. In the process of, you know, him stopping at the gas station, he said she was still aggravated, you know, and, you know, kind of tense. So he went into the gas station and next thing he knew, there was someone behind him that was like, you know, what is your girlfriend doing to the car? Like something's going on. She's making a mess of things. And he was like, that's not my um, girlfriend. That's my daughter. And he proceeded to go outside. And he said it was a gallon of milk that was thrown in the vehicle as well as a carton of eggs. Thrown in the vehicle? In the vehicle. Did you see, I presume he showed you the vehicle oh, when he got, got home. Oh, pictures. This is outside the car, right? The outside and the inside. <sighs> All those dried up, um, dripping white stains, like dried up milk and eggs that had, it was hot that day, very hot. So he gets to the car and what does he do? Um, I wasn't there, so I don't know exactly. What does he tell you he does? He, he's, he, t he, he said he wanted to flip, but of course he didn't. But he said there was like onlookers that, you know, had a towel brought him a towel so at least he can wipe the milk out of the seat so he can come home with the vehicle. So did he tell her to get out? Well, she didn't get back in the vehicle. He advised me that someone else ended up taking her home. Okay. And so he comes home, he shows it to you. Do you ever talk to her and say, what happened? Or Well, so me and her never had an interaction. We, the first interaction that we actually had was, this was about August, uh, I forget the exact date, but um, I was out of town and she, we went back and forth on Messenger. And she was like, you know, my mom told me that you were suing me. And she's like, I'm confused. Oh, this is after the fact. Yeah, this you was had, after you the fact. Had you ever met her before this? Oh, yes. I've you had? Her, yeah, and had you ever had any problems with her? Um, no. So when this happened, did you pick up the phone and, I'm just curious, did you pick up the phone and call her and say, what happened? You're, I don't have a contact and number for her. All right, didn't, didn't your roommate have one? Yeah. And you didn't want it? You no. just, you didn't want to, okay. I, I'm not a messy That's person. That's fine, I got it. So you did not communicate with her. So you file the lawsuit, you file it, you serve her at her mother's, I guess? Well, I didn't serve her. I don't know who served out. The process they, server serves yeah, her at her yeah. mother's. And then what happens? You get a text from her. Um, a text about maybe two, three weeks later. Um, I'm confused what's going on. I got this letter to my mom's house. What is this about? I'm like, well, you know what you did to the vehicle. Like, you know, you put the milk, you put the eggs in the vehicle, you know what happened. And then followed up with that. Um, I'm not paying for your vehicle, Ashley. Okay. So what happened, Ms. Blair? Okay. So um, I went to go get groceries one day. Um, I was going to get on the bus to go back home, but my grocery bag was too heavy. So I called my dad to come get me. 
Now, uh, how's your relationship with your dad? He have not been there for me my entire life. Um, it's not good. Um, he abusive to women. Like I watched him abuse her and manipulate her. Are they romantic or not romantic? Yes. Okay. Like. Uh, can I, I ask you then? Why did you call him? Because I really I didn't have no money, no anything, no nothing at the time. So I called him. How old are you? I'm 20. 20. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I called him. It was so hot that day. So. Couldn't get on a bus, couldn't go home. Um, I had someone at the, I had someone at my mom's house waiting so I can um, babysit, so I can make money or whatever. And um, so I called him. He said he would be there in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So I was like, okay. But the baby was already at the house and she was waiting in the Well, driveway. why were you doing grocery shopping if you were supposed to be working? Like, why, well, did, why did you pick then to do grocery shopping well, that you couldn't handle? because the bag was too heavy and that you had no money to go home. Like, I was you know. hungry, like I was really hungry. And even the money that I spent on the food. Right, but so if you're hungry, then you walk somewhere, but you were somewhere that required a ride back. So it sounds well, like poor plan. I had to use my WIC card and I couldn't walk to the store, like the groceries, like I couldn't walk to the corner store to grab something. I was using my card, so. You were using what? A, a WIC card? Yeah, I know what a WIC card is, but yeah. uh, but you were using that and you couldn't use it closer to your home? You had to, how no. did you get to the grocery store? The bus. But you couldn't take the bus back because? Yeah, because I had heavy, I had cans, I had milk, I had a lot of stuff. That's the poor planning part, but go ahead. All right, so yeah. you call him and what happens? I called him, um, I asked him to um, come get me. He said he was already out, so he'll be there in like 10, 15 minutes. So I was like, okay, cool. He didn't end up coming until like 20, 25 minutes after. So I called him again before he, like five minutes before he arrived. And I was nice, I was polite, everything, because he was giving me a ride. So if I, I would have never called him if I had money for Uber. I would have never called him. Right. But um, so. So you call him again, and what happens in that phone call? Um, I called him and he started cursing me out, like, you're not about to rush me. Um, I'm like, I'm just calling you to ask you. Um, where you are so that I can tell her at the house, like, I'll be there in 10 minutes, I'll be there in eight minutes. Because I kept telling her, oh, I'll be there in 15 minutes, I'll be there. And it kept getting longer and longer, and she had to go to work too. So I'm like, oh my God, like, I'm inconveniencing her. So um, I get in a car. When I get in a car, I just, I was just silent, completely silent. Like, um, he was upset that I got in the car and I didn't say anything, but you already cursed me out and screamed at me on the phone, so why would I get in the car and say anything? So, and he know that's Thanks for I the am. ride? Hmm? Thanks for the ride? Maybe that's what you say when you get in the car and someone's giving you a ride? Yeah. Or you don't get in the car. Yeah, but he then was Then you already, leave a few cans behind and you take he the bus. Already, he already was cursing me out and stuff, so. There's a lot of baggage between you and your father that I don't understand because I haven't been present. I haven't lived your life, so I understand that. But when you get in the car, you then uh, don't say a word, and then what happens? Yeah, because we were just already on the phone like two minutes ago. I got it. So, so then I, what happens? So I got in the car. We get down the road. He stopped at a gas station. Who's this fellow? This is my baby father. Are you pregnant? Yeah. Oh, God. All right, and where was he while all this is going on when you're hungry well, and pregnant and he lives can't in another state? And... Okay, all right, so go on. So, um, I get to the gas station, and he before we got to the gas station, he was already staring at me the entire time, like trying to antagonize me to say something, talk to him. Meaning, what? What was he saying? Like, he was just looking at me. He like, um, you look so stupid. Like, why do you have an attitude? You, you should be grateful that I'm giving you a ride. And like, just a whole bunch of stuff. But he never did anything for me. So like, him giving me a ride is like, so small. OK. <laughs> so um, I get to the gas station, and then we was arguing already. Like, we was already arguing. Well, and, who was saying what? Um, I don't know. That part was a blur. Okay, so he goes but, to the gas station because he's buying cigarettes. He wasn't buying anything. He got. He went to the gas station to like. It was a part of him antagonizing me. It was not because he knew that I had to get home. He didn't have to go to the gas station for gas. He just pulled up in a parking lot in a parking spot. So it was no reason why he went to the gas station. Okay. And so he um he got out the car and he was doing something in the gas station and we was already still arguing and I came I um I came I got out the car and I came in the gas station and I told him like um why are we here like you you doing this on purpose like you know I have I don't already don't have I'm trying to go to work <laughs> 
and you were here for what? And you know that I have to get home. My house is not that far from the Walmart. And what did he say? Um, from there, we just like, we just start, start like arguing more. A, a lot of stuff in, that happened was like a blur because we was, I was so frustrated. And so I started like, I embarrassed him a little bit. I started telling him how I felt and the stuff that he did to me as a kid. Wait, you're saying and, that in the in, in the, the store? store in what the, what in did the, you say he had done to you as a kid? Like he just like, like um, people would come to the house and like he would show me to some of his friends and he would make me turn around like showing my like body like, oh, I have to get the shotgun cause she getting older or like just certain stuff like that and like other and stuff. And that came up at the-, at the at Yeah, the... I told him that because okay. Like, how could you tell me to be, um, feel grateful or whatever, but I don't know. So, um, I was in the guest, we was arguing and I embarrassed him. So he told me he leaving me at the gas station and that he not taking me home. And it was already hot. It was so hot. I was already in, at Walmart, like just standing there for like 20, 30 minutes outside of Walmart. And so it was just like, the whole thing was like him antagonizing me and yeah, it was a lot. But I watched him, he, he's really abusive like to women. And I watched him like do it all the time to my mom, to her. Every time I, every single time I'm at their house, I always, he, she, he always disrespecting her, like always. But my, my dad know with me, like if you disrespecting me, I'm just, I'm not, either I'm gonna ignore you and I'm gonna be quiet or I'm just not gonna deal with you. So he just. So what'd you do? Because he was angry or whatever, he told me he not, he leaving me at the gas station and that I don't need to be, um, I, he not taking me or whatever. He took my bag outside the car and he put it on the um, the the steps or whatever. And I took my I took the eggs and milk and I put it inside his car. How? I what threw, did you do? I threw it in his car. How many eggs did you throw inside? Is that his car or is that it's, her car? He she never drives since I was little. She never drove a car, the car, like from some accident or whatever. So anytime he come, it's his car. Like it's now, her. Now who owns the car? Who's the legal owner? It's my vehicle. I drive occasionally. I don't drive very often. Is it in his name or no? No. It's completely in your name. Yes. All right, so go on. Yeah, he, I assumed it was his car. It's right. always, she, he always drives. In any car. event, what you do then is you throw how many eggs? Do you remember? I took the, I took the car in and I took the egg, the um, eggs and I threw it in his car. Just one by one, all dozen of them? No, I took the entire thing. And oh, the threw entire it back thing. And you mm -hmm. threw it at the outside of the car? Yes, but he antagonized me. How did me. the milk get inside the car? I threw it in his car. Okay, so the door was still open? The window was open. The window was open. So mm -hmm. you threw milk inside the car? Mm -hmm. And your defense. I threw is... the entire milk in the. And I feel like he should pay for it. Because? The expenses because he antagonized me. Like, he know what he did, like, the entire. She could have, she know me and she know how I am. So I feel like she could have reached out to me. What do you mean she me. knows how I am? She know my character. So I feel like she could have reached out to me and called me like, hey, um, whatever you and your dad had going on that day, um, you could have um, like, my car is damaged and I, I need you to pay for it. She never reached out to me, nothing. Like he, when, when, we was at, when we was at the gas station, he was the one like, oh, I'm about to sue you. I'm gonna make sure like he, because I embarrassed him, in the gas station and I said what I said, now he wanted this to happen. Well, no, because you threw a dozen eggs and uh, yeah, a, I get it. a gallon of milk I get is it. why this is happening. Because what she had to do was take her car to be detailed. Do you know what that means? It's yeah, like a I really, know. really profound and expensive cleaning that to, in order to make sure that the car doesn't smell forever. Because that's what happens when you throw eggs at a car, in a car and milk and the, you know, then it just cooks in the back seat with all the milk from the heat. And then you have to throw away a car, a car. Welcome back to the People's Court. I'm Harvey Levin. The defendant threw raw eggs and a gallon of milk all over the plaintiff's truck. And now there is a hideous odor. But the defendant says she was justified because her father pushed her to the brink and she had to stop this abuse one way or the other. Let's go back into the courtroom. She nipped it in the bud as quickly as she could by getting the car detailed. But that detailing cost the $270. When you say, well, she could have called me. Yeah, maybe she's mad and she doesn't want to call you and she doesn't want to have an argument with you. Or whatever it is. The bottom line is that when you got the lawsuit, it's not like you turned around and paid her. Let's see what you say to her when you get the lawsuit. Your words to her 
was I'm not paying. I'm not paying. So then what would be the point? She could have called me. And what? Normally when someone says that, they're trying to explain to me, she could have called me, we could have worked it out. I just but there's she, nothing to work she, out. Because... She, know, she know how my father is. Okay, let's say is. your father's the worst human in the world. The, the, the remedy for that is don't have anything to do with your father. But I really need help. Yeah, I understand. But see, I'm, I, I want to, it, since it's not obvious to you, I'm going to sit down and break it down. All right? When did you schedule the babysitting job? I'm not sure. Like the day, I the mean. The same day. Okay, it I'm sorry. Is it before day. you went grocery shopping? It was, it was like before I went grocery shopping. Okay, so stop. But so I, was now, already, stop, I was stop, already stop, at stop, the. Stop, stop, stop. I was already at the. Okay, Walmart. then that's not before you went grocery shopping. Well, so you're already grocery shopping. Now you know that you've got to get back. So that means you've got to take the bus back and be on time. So maybe that's the moment where you should be buying just what you can carry. How pregnant are you? I'm eight months. And how pregnant were you then? Like seven months. Okay. So you know that you can only buy what a seven-month pregnant woman can buy who's trying to get home on time in order to do a job. So why do you buy so much that you need to ask the man who treats you like that for a ride and then you end up going as far as you went to destroy a car thinking you're hurting him, but you were hurting her. Either way, you don't get... If it was him in here, he'd win too. You understand? Like, you don't yeah, get I to get do it. that. I get that. I'm responsible. I get it, but... Oh, I you do? Like, because I feel because, like because he... I'm surprised that you get it because what you said to her in the text was, I'm not paying for your car. And you're telling me I shouldn't have to pay because he antagonized me. I don't care how much he antagonizes you. That doesn't give you a right to, to, to conduct criminal mischief against someone else's property. It just doesn't. Okay, and the sooner understand. you realize that, the better, because... I realize it. Do you? Yes, because I you're going to be a mama now. So you can't have that kind of, of lack of control, all right? Because they're going to test you every minute. $270 verdict for the plaintiff. So in a fairly easy decision for the, uh, for the judge, the plaintiff has convinced her she deserved to prevail, and she does for the full $270. Ms. Blair, you heard the judge. She kind of let you have it. What, what are you thinking right now? Oh, that's fine. I understand. So are you sorry you did it? You don't seem, uh, you don't seem sorry at all. No, I'm not sorry. Do you think, think you'll do that kind of thing I'm, again? Have you I'm, heard anything I'm, I'm sorry this? for her, but no, no I'm not sorry. Well, I'm I sorry think it's that a I called tough him. Lesson. <laughs> tough lesson for you to learn. All right, yep. good luck to you. All right. Go ahead. Let's see what Miss Covington has to say. She's on her way out of the courtroom right now. No question, you you deserve to prevail, Miss Covington. Let me yes. ask you, how do you feel? I feel great. And the sad part is, this is definitely was never done out of spite. I wanted to teach her a lesson, like you know, you're going to be a mom. You can't just do anything to people's personal, you know, items and vehicles. It's unacceptable. All right. Well, you know, you did the right thing by filing the lawsuit against her. All right. Good luck to you. All right. Thank you very much. Well, Doug, being annoying is not a defense to ruining that person's property. Um, if you think about it, uh, if you were justified in damaging or destroying somebody's property because they annoyed you, there would be chaos in this world. And that's why the defendant's defense in this case was a non-starter. I had a bridesmaid dress altered for a wedding. The seamstress sewed in cups and changed the look of the dress completely. The bride hated the dress, so I had to buy a new one. Can I sue the seamstress for the cost of the new dress? Well, that depends on a lot of facts that I don't have in this hypothetical. Why did the seamstress put in cups? Right. They don't usually do that unless you ask them to. Right, plus maybe that was like, uh, maybe the bridesmaid's dress was a Kmart dress, and the one she went out and bought to replace it was, uh, you know, Oscar yeah, de la Renta. Her, you, or her, the pants. remedy for her damages would be what it cost to get it back to the way it was before right. it supposedly got ruined. But right. first we have to decide if it got ruined. What right. exactly was the reason that that thing that cups were put in that she didn't want? I mean, usually seamstresses don't go through the expense, time, and trouble of putting in cups unless that's exactly what you asked for. Right, right. So if she's saying the job wasn't done correctly, then you get the money back for the job or right. for correcting the job but to have the dress. dress. But not for a new dress that's not a bridesmaid's dress that you bought right. to replace a bridesmaid's dress. Right, right, unfortunately. Yeah. And by the way, why 
do we have to have bridesmaids all wearing the same dress? You know, a lot of women aren't doing that now. They have right. them all in black, but they get to okay. pick their own dress. Or they right. have them because all like, in I'm red, thinking, and they get to pick their own dress. And my, my godson, Bobby, when he got married, he had the most awesome wedding. And then, it, well, that's because the you, officiant you was and I amazing. performed it. So <laughs> the officiants were pretty good. Yeah. But uh, other than that, I mean, he had the reception in a prop warehouse. Yeah. Which like movie props and TV props and it was just weird stuff everywhere. The food was food trucks all parked outside, so you get what you wanted. It was just like the readings were spoken word by right you know, or rap. Rap. It was just. Oh, it was, it was amazing. God. It really was. So he kind of set the. Are pretty high now well, see, I, I think that a lot of the traditional stuff doesn't necessarily have. We just went to a beautiful wedding where there were, right. I think, 20 bridesmaids, and it was more traditional. And it was lovely, and it was traditional. I don't know. I, I cry at every wedding, and right. you know, I, <laughs> I I love seeing people be creative, and then I love seeing you know right. the old-fashioned stuff too that reminds yeah. me of our wedding. And yeah, yeah.